The Empire is the most important faction in Total War Warhammer, and that should honestly not be a surprise to anyone. They're the main human faction in Warhammer, and as such, are the easiest for most players to understand and relate to. A classic underdog hero fantasy, representing the best of humanity, trying to overcome not only great external evils, but also the worst selfish instincts of their own kind. Because of this, there are people who only want to play as the Empire, and even among those such as myself who prefer other factions, a little run as them is generally still a fun choice. Suffice to say then, it probably hasn't helped Warhammer 3's popularity and mass replayability that the Empire's campaign has kind of sucked since the launch of Immortal Empires. However, the new patch that's coming with the launch of the upcoming Thrones of Decay DLC represents Creative Assembly's attempt to put that situation right, with an overhaul of the faction, including reworks and mechanics specific to the OGs of the Empire, Karl Franz and Balthazar Gelt. This, in my opinion, is a move as important as the launch of the Thrones of Decay DLC itself, and in this video I'm going to take you through the bounty that CA is laying before us. Bear in mind that none of this is tied to the DLC, it's a free update included with the new patch, so if you buy Thrones of Decay, or even just the Elspeth von Draken part of it, then you'll get her and new units on top of all of this. We'll start with Balthazar Gelt's update, which has the fewest mechanical changes, but an obvious geographical one. Gelt now starts in Grand Cathay, and however you may feel about this switch, it has to be said that he probably needed to be moved somewhere, because had he stayed over in Faildorf, then we would not only have had three Imperial Legendary Lords right there in the Empire, but they would have all been in a row down in the south with Karl Franz in Altdorf and Elspeth von Draken in Nuln, so that could have thrown off the weighting of the campaign map a fair bit. Now, some might say that the north of the Empire could use a bit of metal magic, but with the number of memes and jokes out there associating Gelt with the Vietnam War and slogans and music from that time, perhaps CA were joining in on the fun by putting him over in the Far East. Gelt's new mechanic is the Colleges of Magic, which employs a new currency called Arcane Essays. Collecting more Arcane Essays enables you to recruit more wizards, as well as unlocking myriad magical items, spells, and buffs to really put the emphasis upon spamming magic with the Golden Boy himself. You can also recruit a Gold Wizard now, meaning that Gelt himself is no longer the only representative of rapper-style bling in the Imperial cause. Now, while this added mechanic isn't obviously huge, it's definitely thematic and gives Gelt's campaign a palpably different feel to that of other Empire Lords, even if making the currency-involved essays makes it sound a little like Gelt is a school teacher setting people homework and then collecting it for grading. And now we'll move on to the big chin himself, Karl Franz of Reichland. The only obvious geographical difference with this campaign is that Karl Franz now owns the Fortress of Helmgar at the start. And that's obviously not a huge change like Gelt going full passport bro in the east there, but it speeds up the start of your campaign, because sometimes the Empire Secessionists would hole up inside that place and be a pain in the ass to get out. So this little tweak means that you should be able to get out and about to defend the Empire more quickly, and it's of note that CA have given Karl Franz replenishment in neutral territories, as well as removing diplomatic consequences from moving your armies through the lands of your elect accounts, so the big KF can be played as a saviour without the game kicking you in the balls for it. That reduction in overall ball kicking is also reflected in the reworked Imperial Authority bar. Gone is the old system of low number tallying and turning your campaign to crap as soon as a couple of your tissue paper elect accounts depart this mortal coil, and instead we have a system that scores out of 100, with far less punitive penalties for the failings of AI factions. Basically, if you're quick to respond to threats as the Emperor should be, you shouldn't find the Imperial Authority too much of a problem to deal with now. It's important to note, too, that this mechanic becomes available to other Imperial Legendary Lords who are far from home if they take control of a settlement that's within the bounds of the Empire. Alongside that bar, you'll see the old fealty icon, and you'll also find that Prestige is still in the game. But in this rework, it's less of a borderline superfluous token with occasional uses, and more of an integral part of every phase of your campaign because you can use it in the new Electoral Mechanics window. 
The diplomatic talks section will be immediately recognisable as a limited scope reskinning of an old high elf mechanic that fits well into the political world of the Empire. You can use it to improve relations with an elect account, antagonise them, or even do so between two elect accounts themselves without affecting your own relations with either of them. It's a cool addition, and one that I hope is implemented soon on Tinder, so I can press a button to improve relations with hot goth girls there out in the real world. Get on it, CA! However, Diplomatic Talks is not the big addition for Prestige. That title goes to the Emperor's Decrees screen, which enables you to spend your Prestige on a multitude of very useful things, ranging from army experience to population surplus, temporary spawned armies to defend your elect accounts with, right the way through to confederating an elect account in return for prestige and a drop in the fealty of all the other elect accounts. And that change really sums up the overall theme for Karl Franz's rework. It's about putting more control in the hands of the player rather than leaving it to the AI. The earlier Reichland campaigns have been very RNG driven allowing the AI to essentially nerf your faction to hell without your involvement. Something that gets old really, really fast in a campaign as beset with aggressive enemies as a Karl Franz one. In this patch, the frustrating negative elements of the AI losing settlements have been reduced, as well as moving away from the irritating game of playing hard to get with elect accounts who want to confederate. With enough prestige and fealty in place, you can just do it if you want and deal with any consequences, rather than the old system of getting one shot every 10 turns and having to wait for them to offer again if you didn't do it straight away. So that's my rundown of the major things to expect from the upcoming Empire rework that is due to launch sometime. See, I haven't officially announced the date yet. However, they're letting little old me play it, so it can't be that far off. What do you think of these changes? Are you happy to see Balthazar Gelt taking the lads on tour and trying to cozy up to Miao Ying before Imric can get to her? Would you rather he'd stayed in the Empire and tried his luck with Goth Bay Elspeth? What about Carl? Are you looking forward to using his new mechanics to save all the useless Death Wish having elect accounts from themselves? Put your opinions down in the comments section and we'll discuss it. And while you're down there, hit like, subscribe, and join me for the next video, which will be coming very soon. Thank you guys.